how did we how did we find ourselves in this situation? Um, and and that's I guess an interesting kind of segue to our our next topic. We talked all of our hockey right now. Uh, we mentioned it; it was rumored last week, but it was confirmed earlier today. Tim Connolly is in fact going to go take the I think it was president of basketball operations job at, so, yep, in Minnesota. So. Yep, same exact job. Yes. Same exact job for I think for, same for, same amount of money or is it a, more money too? It's 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 slightly more money and it's ownership equity. Basically, a deal that no one will ever turn down. <laughs> Let's put it this way: the, the, it, it, and there's no way Crockies would wouldn't have give would have gave him ownership equity. Very very few general managers in the in the landscape of the four professional sports have what Tim Connolly has right now. And look, I will have nothing but good words to say about Tim Connolly because the team he has put out has been incredible for years. Like, like think about how he drafted Yoke, how he drafted Jamal. The man has had has not had a top five pick in the draft ever. And look at the the, the talent he has put on this team. He has done an incredible job. Like I, he's going to be sorely missed, mm-hmm. sorely missed. And and the worst part about it is to me is how how do you let him have an interview? Is my thing, like that should never have been a been a well. Maybe, yeah, go go talk to them. See what happens. Crocky, you should not have even let they him let him do it. The door. They have to ask permission, Jimmy. They have to ask permission to, to interview people. Crocky was probably too busy uh, brown nosing McVeigh or some shit. Oh like like like, he, like he, they have to ask permission to to. Like, I don't know how the NHL, MLB, and NFL do it. I know the NFL does it too. But you have to ask permission to interview assistant coaches to enter, or to, for head coaching jobs, to interview uh, um, um, uh, management p- positions. You have to interview. You have to ask permission. That's why teams you rarely ever see guys go from one division rival to division. Yes, That's NBA true. division. NBA divisions don't fucking matter um, as much as the NFL and the NHL do. Um, but it's it's still just a stinger because look, it's not like Minnesota is bad. They have they have Cat who's not Jokic, but they have Anthony Edwards who's, who looks like an all out stud, and you have D'Angelo Russell and a, and a bunch of players that we traded them <laughs> that, that people forget. They have Malik Beasley, they have Jared Vanderbilt, a bunch and of Connelly built teams. both teams. Billy built both teams basically, like, right? and now you have an ownership coming in that is just going to break the bank for him. Like, look, I, I, I wish him nothing but success outside of when he plays us, because, like I said, he gave me, like he said, he gave me some of the best last few years of my life. But like I said, this is Masai Ujiri 2.0. Masai Ujiri, people forget, Masai Ujiri was was a general manager that traded Carmelo Anthony to the Knicks. Yes, that Masai Ujiri, who was who also. Traded for Kawhi Leonard and brought a champion, an NBA championship, to the state of oh, the country of Canada. <laughs> that Messiah, you same guy. And Messiah right now, Messiah is the highest paid general manager in all sports. Tim Connolly right now is top five. Two of the top five were in your pockets. There are questions to be had. Look, I, I, I'm hopeful. Look, I, I'm, I'm not going to sit here and say this is basketball because it's not like Jokic just walked out the door. At the end of the day, Jokic is the guy, and what he built here is is, is established. But now it's on Calvin Booth to, to – and a guy that they were, quote, unquote, grooming to be, be prepared to take the next step, which I fucking hate that they were because that means they were preparing for this to happen, that they were grooming him to be the guy and – now it's time for you to finish what he started. Because look, you've been given keys to a Ferrari. You have been given keys to a Ferrari, Calvin Booth. It's not even a joke. You have been given keys to the two-time MVP, a, a guy who holds a ton of NBA playoff records in the first round of playoffs in the bubble, a, a rising star in Michael Porter Jr., one of the uh, a guy who's an all-rookie second team. Shout out Bones for the all-rookie second team guy in Bones Highland. Like you, you have a team built. Now, what are you going to do for the rest of, with the rest of it? That's the question. And, and we, we will see three years, four years down the road if this, if this really costs us. Because it's not, it's, it doesn't sit well with me that we are going to have to, we're not going to, we are going to break the bank to pay the greatest player in your franchise's history this summer and give him the Supermax contract. And you, don't have, and you have a brand new president of operations making a deal. That scares me. Absolutely scares me. You don't, have, you don't have the luxury of having 
Yes, John Elway sucked when he was general manager, but we don't get Peyton without John Elway. You don't have the luxury of having John Elway sit there. You don't have the luxury of Joe Sackett making deals. You have Calvin Booth, who was a mid-level player throughout his whole career in the NBA and could be a good exec that is making these deals. It worries me. It absolutely worries me. Uh, they are right now. It could either be fine, and as you say, he could take over the keys to the Ferrari and keep things on track, or they could become the Rockies. That's le- legitimately where we're sitting right now. Because as we're the fact that you, I did not know that they had asked Tim Connolly permission. I, that's on me. Yeah, I should have known that. Yeah. But that just makes you a fucking feeder team. You are the feeder team of the NBA because you're you're just grooming these guys and they these guys are proving themselves to everybody else in the league. And then the league, the other teams in the league that are willing to spend money and willing to put their franchise in a good spot for the future and, and actually investing in them, they just steal all of our good all of our good parts. It, it's is that's exactly what the Rockies do. Trevor Story, Nolan Arenado, all of these guys. I get that it's different, but it, it's you want me to keep going? <laughs> like the Cronkies are, I the Cronkies I, other I, than the Avalanche are I, inching towards the Monfart territory. I sent the tweet out that 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 it's hilarious that the only the only ownership group in the state that is willing to put a fucking team on the field that is worthy of the fans is a team that is certainly currently being sold. <laughs> It's it, like think about this between the Crockies, the the Bowling Group, and, and Monfart. Who would you pick out of the three? I'm picking the new owner. I'll, I'll take myself in that equation. <laughs> I, actually, I, I'm picking the new owner. I'm picking fucking Walmart guy. Yeah, I, it's that's that's how sad it is. It's it's oh, it's like I said. I. I'll take Wolf of Wall Street. There's a there's a reason there's a reason why Stan does not give a fuck about our fans that we haven't had got to watch the MVP for three straight years. Look, look, you tweet you retweeted the guy. I don't know, I forgot who said it, but Connolly gets to go to a situation where he has ownership equity, his fans can watch the fucking team, and he has all this young talent to fuck around with. Why would you not? That's why I'm not mad about this. This isn't a. This isn't a. Oh, you fucking traitor! You fucking left us. This is not this at all. all. He did it not screw been, us at all. This entire thing could have been avoided. All they had to say, all the Conkeys had to say was no. no he had to come no. up from air from giving giving uh, McVeigh a double wrister. You just what? come up for air for a second and say no. You cannot talk to Tim Conley. What was it? Three weeks ago, he was in fucking Sambor, Serbia. <laughs> That, I mean, what? that's why the rumors are circulating. Maybe Jokic doesn't want to sign what? the next contract right no, now. No, no, no. First, first of all, don't, don't, don't you put that evil on me, Ricky Bobby. <laughs> Jenny, we're, I was, not even, I we're not I was, talking about that, okay? I figured I was, that, getting, I was at risk of getting punched through the screen Don't here. you put that evil on me, Ricky Bobby, because if that happens, I may actually fucking break down in tears, okay? So we're not talking about that, okay? Right, um, right. He will get paid. He's going to sign. Care, yeah. I don't care if what you have to fucking sell. Give fucking somebody Red Rocks. Give them Motherfucker, my high state. I don't care what it takes. Give him the fucking keys to the damn city. I don't care what it takes. You're giving him the supermax. You're giving him the super, super, super max. I would make a fucking new name for it. The Jokic match. I don't care. He's not fucking leaving you. Don't you fucking do this to me. I, I, I'm already on edge because I know I've seen the story written over and over again. I've seen the same exact fucking story because you're new to nug life. To nugget life. I'm fucking living this shit for 20 fucking years and I know what's going to happen. Yeah. I know what's going to happen. I know the outcome because there's a reason why the Miami Heat, the San Antonio Spurs, the fucking Lakers, the fucking Warriors, the Warriors there's a reason why they're consistently because they find one motherfucker saying, we're opening the bank for you. We have that one motherfucker. We have him. We have him. Don't fuck it up. We have him. Don't fuck it up. We have him. Don't fuck it up. Putting faith oh. in Stan Kroenke not to fuck something we, up. We have that guy. The novel idea. It's, it's, we have that guy. That guy that 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 that, that has the that has the ability to fucking be the greatest ever ever fucking athlete ever. And I'll fucking say it. He he'll have his number retired up there. He's on that pace right now. He yeah. hasn't possibly doing that you don't fucking let him leave you don't even hesitate i don't care who you have to trade whose dicks you gotta suck you don't let him leave <laughs> okay here we go 
we're getting to that if, that portion. Of the Jimmy, you know, you have no idea. I, like I said, it's it's a bad it's a bad dream that just yeah. keeps coming back. Yeah. It's a bad dream that keeps coming back. I've seen the story. I've lived through the fucking mellow pain. I lived through the AI pain. I lived through the fucking Dante. <laughs> like I, 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 I get it. I get I'm it. laughing through the pain, Jimmy. <laughs> <laughs> laughing because I don't want it to happen again. Yeah, I, <laughs> that's I, all I, I can do. I hope it doesn't. I I hope it doesn't. I, but you know, I, I saw I saw a funny a funny TikTok because I don't know why I'm on a TikTok trend, but I am. Motherfuckers pick a team at four years old and be like, "Yep, this team's gonna ruin my life," and that's exactly what these motherfuckers have done to me. Yeah, hey, I'm right exactly there with you. I I did the same exact thing, and yeah, it, it ain't fun. It's just hopefully hopefully they keep it. I mean, the play the pieces are in place now. Just get everybody healthy and let's see what this team can actually do. And truly, just don't do anything major. Just don't, you don't need to come in and put new rims on your Ferrari. The engine runs just fine. You don't have to sell off parts just for for parts sake. That that doesn't have to happen. So hopefully that's that's what instructions he's given when Booth takes over. Uh, speaking of the basketball on the court, just briefly, these games suck. Oh, they're so bad. They oh, are I'm, awful to watch. I, I, look, look, as you're listening to this, I have already been to game four, but I will be at game four for Dallas and Golden State. I'm in the nosebleeds. I'm, 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 I bought a ticket because I am working in Dallas all next week. So I'm so damn excited to go to that arena. Like I said, I'm, I'm, I'm a basketball fan in general. I love my nugs more than anything, but I'm a basketball fan in general. When I saw we're going to Fort Worth, Dallas, Texas, I'm saying, yep, I'm going to game and there's a reason why i didn't wait around for game six to happen and i said yep i'm flying early i'm going to game four because this series may be done by then yeah. and it looks like it may well i think Dallas. May, look look what what does luca else have to do I, i'll save it for for the, the for the, the episode after the Mavs game but luca is doing everything he possibly can and it's not enough this warriors team i have seen andrew wiggins do things that there's a reason, like the reason why he was drafted number one overall. That's crazy to think. Eight years later, however long it's been, we were seeing why he was drafted number one overall now. Has it been eight years? Please tell me it hasn't I don't, been eight I don't years. know. It's 2022, and he was – maybe it's been like five or six years. Yeah, I, I think know. it was – I think we were in college, so. Either way, it's it's just like, yeah. This I, feel, I already then, feel old enough, Nico. You don't have to make me feel older. And, and then the other series, you get to Miami and Boston, you're like, oh, who the fuck's playing tonight? Lowry playing? No. Is Marcus Smart playing? No. Is Tyler Hero playing? No. Is Jimmy Butler playing? No. It's literally like saying, oh, like game time decision game. It's 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 literally like it's the best way you put it, it's Brad Stevens for Pat Riley slash Andy Ellsberg slash X Bolstra slash Ebu Doku being like the chess match. <sighs> I'm not playing this motherfucker tonight, but you know what? I'm gonna make sure it says game time decision. So you think he's playing tonight. <laughs> and it's literally been blowout after blowout, but it's not like it's one sided. It's like, huh. Boston, your turn to kick the shit out of us. Ha, Miami, your turn to do the exact same thing. It's 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 like uh, who, who wants to be the puppy today? Who wants to who who wants to lay down dead? It's literally what it is. I expected the series to go seven. I I still stand by my thing that I think Miami could win the series because they'll win the home games. And they have home home, home core advantage the last three games. But man, it is literally a game of who the hell is playing. That's that's the best way to put it. Who's Cause, playing? Cause and who's who's going to hit their shots? Yeah, yeah, because Bam has been terrible. Jim, Jimmy, Jim, Bam looked better to or better on Game Three, but Bam has not shown up. And, and, and this series is just like I said, it's it's literally who, who's going to show up. Is it going to be the Celtics team that went on a on a uh, uh, fifteen and two run during the regular season, or is it going to be the Boston Celtics team that was five hundred at Christmas? Or is this going to be the Miami Heat team that that became the number one seed, or is it the Miami Heat team that last year got swept in the first round of playoffs? You don't know what you're going to get. That's the funny thing about it. And it looks like Golden State will just run through one of these teams. I, I, I think Boston will put up more of a fight, but I have a feeling Golden State may just run through one of these teams because this well, team is just unreal. <laughs> yeah, and especially, I mean, thinking about just the matchup-wise, Miami is a little bit more similar to, to Denver where they play with a bigger guy. And I don't think if Bam just decides that he wants to play, Bam is the – Damn good player, but it's, yeah, it's similar to what we were talking. Yeah. It's similar to what we said about DeAndre Ayton last year in the playoffs. If he's if he's there and if he's engaged, he's great. He's, he's an great, offensive weapon. Yeah. He's, he can play defense, all that stuff. If he just decides, yeah, I don't really give a fuck tonight. It's over. It's over. 
Yeah, it's uh, and you, uh, man. I, I, like I said, I, I, I don't want the worst win. I don't at all. Like I said, I'm gonna be wearing Maverick shit. Six out of the last eight. Before. Finals. I know, I know six Jay. out of I'm the last I'm aware eight. of that. You know how much that sucks. It's and like they took, it. it's like they took an off season. It's like, eh, let's, you know what? Bubble. Who cares? Um, fucking last year. Who cares? Bucks. You can have one. Lakers. You can have one. Hey, it's our turn again. <laughs> Kevin Durant. Who? We still have. We have. We still have. And I'll say it, arguably the greatest point guard of all time. We're going to be top two when his career is done. Right through Magic Johnson. Yes, I said that. And I hate him much as much as the next guy. But you, you are watched. Like, and look, they, uh, it's just, you talk about shark tooth mentality. This team just fucking says, and the, uh, it's, like I said, it's just painful, Jimmy. Yeah. It, it, it's like it's like I'm watching, like I said, with the Nuggets. It's like I'm watching a bad dream all over again. I watched four straight NBA finals with these guys in it. Four mm-hmm. straight. And they won three out of those four. And if it was, or no, no, no. They, they won two out of those four. No, no. They won, no, was, oh, they won the five straight. They won three out of five. Sorry. Yeah. They won the five straight. Yeah. Sorry. Because they went, they went back and forth to Cleveland for three years. And then KD – Came over and that whole thing happened, but yeah, I man, I just I, this team. I just, I'll give you a little awesome. silver lining about that series. I saw it today. Nick Young, when Wiggins was drafted, oh, don't, don't bring that name up. James. No, I'm just I'm giving you the option opportunity to because he's or said, Nick hey, Young. Oh, oh, you mean Nick Wright? Nick wrong? Nick, Nick wrong? Nick. It's Nick Wright, but it's, okay. we call him Nick wrong. Yeah. One of the one of the dumbass NBA analysts that I don't listen to on the list with Stephen A. Smith and Kendrick Perkins and oh, and all those guys, but he did say what that it's it's Wiseman or or is it Wiggins? James Wiseman. James yeah. Wiseman has not that, played. No, he, 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 he was talking about Wiggins. Whoever oh, had the poster the other night. Oh, he said, Wiggins just absolutely. When Wiggins stuff. when Wiggins was drafted, he said he's never going to be able to play big minutes, and the Warriors just threw away like eight years. For, for the money that they ended up paying him. I was like, ah, ah. Uh, I don't know anybody want to tell him? I don't, want to, I don't know about that, but yeah, Wiggins, Wiggins, like, it's, it's, they're not, look, this Dallas team is not getting beat by Curry and, and Clay and Dre, like, and, and Jordan Poole. They're getting their points. Don't get me wrong. But it's Kevon Looney winning game one and two. And it's, and it's Andrew Wiggins winning game three. That's the scary part. Clay and, and Steph have not been unleashed. <laughs> That's where we're like, fuck. These guys. Like, they're, they're saying, you know what, let's, let's just throw everything we have at Steph and Clay and make everyone else beat us. Well, everybody else is whooping the shit out of you. <laughs> I wouldn't do that. That's not a good strategy. And, and the one shot you had at winning the series, you were up by 20 in game two. Up by 20. How deflating is that? You have a chance to go home one one series where you know you're at least going to get to a game five, and all you have to do is win one game, and then you have another home game at home, and you just wash away that lead in literally a minute, and they come back and then get up on you and you lose by ten, literally a thirty point swing. It's literally it's it's a light switch, Jimmy. That's the best way to put it. It's a light switch. They look over and be like, oh, you know, it's getting dark in here. Let's just flip it on, and they're up by 30. Oh, no, you know, it's all right. We'll let them have a game. We'll turn the lights off a little bit. It's bedtime. Up on again, 30 points. I mean, it's, it's, it's literally that quick. It's literally that quick. I, I, uh, That's why I hate I'm saying so it, but they'll probably it. win it. I, so I want Miami to win it at this point because I don't want – Boston to have another ring, and I really don't want Golden State either. And Dallas is basically dead at this point, so I I would love Miami to have a shot, but I have a bad feeling they won't. But then again, Spo is a coach that could possibly play around and fuck with Curry and them. So if there's one coach and one team that I think would have a shot against them, it's Miami. Boston Boston would put up a fight, but they're defensively defensively they would not be able to touch them at all. Like, it, it'd be night and day. Marcus Smart, you throw him on one of Steph and Clay, and the other one goes off for forty. That's literally all happened. And then when you switch them over to the other one, the other one goes off for 40. It's literally like, who are you going to pick? Miami has the guys in, in, in the Gabe Vincents, the, the, the Kyle Lowry's, the heroes, that the, our, and Jimmy Bowlers are good defensively. They're a good defensively sound team. Boston is not that. They'll put you up, put up points on you in a hurry. And that's how they win games. But, Boston, but my, Miami, in my opinion, has the best shot against these guys because it's, it's tough sliding to see who's going to beat them. Yeah. Uh, I, I'll tell you the only thing that I'm hoping for in the NBA playoffs, some entertaining series or some entertaining games. 
I don't want to be able to turn off a game in the third quarter. Like I would do that anyways, but I don't want to have a blowout by the time that we get out of halftime. That's all I would, I would like to see one competitive series, but before we crown an NBA champion, that's all I, I want. Like, like maybe it's because the Avs are, are I, I really have a strong feeling they have a chance at the cup, or maybe it's because I think that the, the way ESPN and, and, and TNT especially has done such a good job promoting these games that I'm watching more hockey games, maybe because the Nuggets are out. But these games, like I said, I, I didn't even watch. Like In years past, I wouldn't even touch watching the Tampa Bay versus 40 game. I would have automatically threw one Boston versus Miami. It's not even a question. And this, yeah. year, and this year, I'm like, I'll just watch Tampa versus Florida. I don't care. Like, like I, I, know, I bet on it. I threw money on Boston to cover, and they hammered the cover. But I, I – I was like, that's not going to be entertaining to me. I might as well throw on, throw on some schoolyard puck and see what's going to happen. Yeah, and uh, this is also like ESPN, I, I will say, for the hockey games, they've had some issues, but it's their first season. It is light years better well, TNT than has what it was. Fucking incredible. Oh, yeah, TNT has TNT hey, been my hey, favorite uh, the entire season. I, hope, I, I don't know who has a cup final, but I hope they do. I hope that they have our. Co- I just hope they have like the conference final that I want to watch. Whether yeah. it's whether it's with the Avs or just I just want. I would re- much rather watch the games on TNT than I would watch them. Well, on- yeah, they they really took uh, uh, the, the the main guy from NBC, like the the, the main the, the secondary announcer that took over for uh, Liam um, Doc Emmerich. Yeah, Liam McHugh, and he's he's a perfect voice for it. Like I don't mind, I don't mind. Uh, um, Butchergrass is good Butchagross. for ESPN. Butchergrass is a good analyst. I like Steve. I, I like Levy. Levy's well, not, we, Levy. Levy's a very good, very good. At it. But like when I'm fucking hearing goal when the puck is at the top of the key, I'm like, oh, top that's of the key, on top of the ESPN's production crew. And like I get it. They're in Canada, and there's a lot of laws you have to get around, and the, the signal may be off. But come on, now that that's literally come what on. it is. TSN. It, they don't was, travel. They're not, not traveling. Like, like, why are we not traveling, these guys? It's the playoffs. Well, I'm pretty sure. I, I'm pretty sure they're doing it from home. Like, like, or not home, but like doing it from I, the ESPN studios. I don't why, think Canada would have allowed them to. Though, I, either way, this has got to be figured out. We're look. The monkey pox is a thing now. We're fucking past this kind of shit. Figure it out, world. Like we, we're talking about high quality playoffs. People are turning. On the fucking radio, myself included. We've been very lucky. I think all the ads playoff games this 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 round has all been TNT. So mm-hmm. We've had fucking excellent announcers. But come on, do better, ESPN. I, I have such high expectations for you because because of what you did with basketball with with Mike Breen, and then what you did with Monday Night Football, getting Joe Buck and Aikman back. Like it's you, you, such high expectations. All it does is a few phone calls, and maybe you can get old Doc out of retirement and hope and, and maybe save save the Stanley Cup final because I'm hoping TNT gets it. I hope TNT gets it as well, but also just the studio now an analyst for ESPN. I like I, I like watching TNT. Chelios and Messier play, but I don't really. They're not as entertaining as the guys on TNT. Even oh, even when Wayno's there, and Wayno's definitely the stick in the mud of of the group. When Wayno's there, this is a, a good he's job a Ferrari of getting in the, in, the, in the trailer park. Yeah, it's, he's just like, having fun. He's like he's like oh, one of the boys again. This is great. He, he he has more goals. He has ten. He has about a hundred times more goals than everyone on that fucking panel <laughs> combined. Everybody on everybody else on that panel would have been fighting for Gretzky. Fighting for Gretzky. Yeah. They, they're, they're not Tra- there. Chalky and fucking Biz would not have uh, touched the ice. No. Would not have not touched the puck. They're, Looked at it wrong like Gretzky. They're the door guys. They're the door guys in that series. If Wayno's in the lineup, just yet. Yeah, no, that's okay. I got the door. That's fine. I got the door. No worries. No worries, Mister Gretzky. I got you, buddy. Don't don't go over the boards. Go out the door. Don't worry. Go out don't the go door. Over yeah, the yeah, don't worry. Okay, right. here's a door, sir. Yeah. Um, anything else that we got to touch on before we wrap things up? Oh, man, I'm just it's surprising, man. We're doing a full Zoom interview, and I haven't had a water ball fly over my head yet. <laughs> Crazy. I, I would have never expected that. <laughs> Either way, yeah, no. Like I said, hopefully by the next time I record this, one, the Mavericks have won a game so that at least game four is entertaining, and two, that we're talking about the Battle of Alberta and who's a better series to team to beat yeah. so that's all i'm hoping for get st louis get that get those get that 
scum off the road and, and and let's just move on to the next one get these get these these bombs out of the way that will move us along to the other playoffs that are going on um we you want to give the bench warmers a little update on the situation that happened yeah the reason you're not seeing me on a computer right now is because my my my, my suitcase is in dallas fort worth currently and and i sat for five hours in the goddamn tarmac uh, yesterday in, in Colorado Springs trying to make it to game four, which Dallas ended up winning. Obviously, I spent the money on the ticket and didn't make it, so I'm a little salty, just a little bit. I'm a little bit better now, but still real pissed about that. But look, it, it's going to be a gentleman's sweep. Golden State is that much better. It, it was good. It was a great showing by Dallas. We'll talk about this other series here in a minute, but it was a great showing by Dallas to try to um, win one in front of your home fans, have some pride, like we say. How many teams can do that nowadays um, when you're a far inferior team? But what I'm seeing from Andrew Wiggins, and I never thought I'd say this before, Andrew Wiggins is showing why he was an all-star this year. <laughs> I, I can't believe those words were just uttered out of my mouth. Like it, it is that crazy how long, how, how great he's done defensively going on Luka, going on the likes of Brunson or Dinwiddie, and trying to lock one of them up while leaving Seth and Clay just to run around freely. Like, look, like, look, there's a reason why Eagle Dalla, Sean Livingston, um, David West, Zaza Pachulia, all those, K- KD, for instance, all had so much success when they played on the Golden State team because all the attention goes to number 30 and number 11. When all the attention goes to you, all you got to do is knock down open shots. Mm-hmm. Because at some point, Steph and Claire are just going to roam around forever and ever, and at some point, they're going to leave you open. The question is, are you going to be able to knock down your shots? And Andrew Wiggins has done exactly that. He had that mean poster in game three uh, we talked about. I, like I said, I would be very surprised as you guys are recording this or as you guys, as you guys are listening to this, that if Dallas was still alive, if they are, I'd, I'd be happy. I'd be in Dallas when game six is, but it's I, I really am not confident in this team. Luka is doing a lot. Dallas, in my opinion, like I said, they're one big man, one big piece, one secondary piece away from being that good of a contender. You keep these same role players, Brunson will get a fat contract. But you keep these, sa- these same role players around him and get a guy like Miles Turner from Indiana or get a guy like Clint Capella from Atlanta, one of those teams, or Julius Randle from New York, one of those teams that are looking to dump one of their – one of their um, um, one big of their solid bigs, big contracts and try to take one of those on, and you can set yourself up very, very well in this Western Conference. Yeah, I these games are actually a decent reminder for my obviously the two of us who who remember what it is like to compete and just to have pride in a certain situation. You might not. It, I don't think Dallas. They obviously want to win the series, but I don't think Dallas thought p- putting up a win last night is going to propel them to a series victory. They just wanted to make sure that they put out a prideful performance and put at least one game out there where they could say, yes, we played the best that we could. And if they lost last night, they would have been happy with their effort and they actually put up a fight. They ended up winning. So you get even that much more pride. And it's the same similar energy to what we saw, especially, I mean, that third period when they pulled the goalie tonight. And I know I I don't want to keep going back to it. It was just a pride moment. And we're, we're seeing that these professional athletes for as much money as they do make and as many especially in the NBA, taking days off and rest days and load management. They still do have some pride. They still do want to play as well as they can. It's not like anybody goes out there to absolutely get dominated. And that was a, a good reminder. So that's what I'm taking from this Dallas Mavericks team. But I agree and, with you. A, a gentleman sweep is going to be the best case scenario for a team that's set up the way that they are. And that's a great segue to talk about the other series, about having pride and not getting your ass beat every single night. Because that's exactly what's happening in Boston and Miami, where every single game has been a 15 point, 15 point game. Mm-hmm. But look, I don't know. It, it is literally a mind fuck. Who the hell's playing? Who the hell's not playing in the series? Jimmy Bowen does not look 100% out there. He, 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 look, this is the Eastern Conference Finals. This is the Eastern Conference Finals. And we have guys taking games off. This is but this is this is a <laughs> this is not the first round of playoffs. We have guys like Lowry who took the first three games of the series off. We have guys like Tyler Hero who hasn't played the last two. This is the Eastern Coast Finals. Last time I checked, the heat culture was if if you can walk, you can run. If you can run, you're playing tonight. <laughs> this is the heat that we saw last year get swept in the first round. I yeah. remember that this is the exact team that we're seeing right now. And and I think Spo's high up with it too. 
because he was tired of trying to trying to throw Duncan Robinson out there, who was terrible all postseason outside of that one game to start the start the postseason, and having to throw um, 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 Max Schroes into situations he's not ready for, and, and you can tell it's gaining on him. Like Old Depot, my God, you're, you're three. It, he is as useless as Ben Simmons from the field shooting right now. It is that bad with Old Depot, a guy that was an All Star, I want to say three or four years ago, and and a guy who was Defensive Player of the Year candidate two years ago. Like he has fallen so so far off for this team. And if they had some of that production from him, they would not be in this position. And look, they're they're only down three two going into Game Six. But you go to Boston, that's not that's not easy. It's not easy at all. And Boston right now, look, I want to, I want to, I want to go back on what I said on Tuesday and say Boston's defense is not good. Boston's defense is incredible. Boston, watch, watch the series back again. Boston's defense is not what it should be without Robert Williams. When Robert Williams is on the floor, it's that inside presence because they swarm, they switch everything one through five from guard, one through five on the other end. That's mm-hmm. exactly what you want for this team. And if you're a Boston team. That's exactly what you want to look for when you face if if not when if you face Golden State in the finals because you can each guy can switch on every single guy and it makes life living hell for the opposing team. And like I said, having Marcus Smart, Defensive Player of the Year, on your team, he can go, he'll be able to match up with the other team's best guy. And I just like I said, Miami. I, I hope they push it to seven, but I still think Boston takes the series. But man. Ugh. I wish I, I, like I said, I wish this. This is the Miami Heat team that was just mentally weak when it came to when they faced the Denver Nuggets in November. Mm-hmm. That's exactly what it was. The Miami Heat team of of the past month or so for the playoffs. This is not the same team at all. Like, I, like, look, I don't want Boston to win. I don't want no, Golden State no. to win. Hell no. I, I, I do not want that to happen. So I'm hoping Miami can somehow pull this out of, out of their ass. But it's going to take everybody taking a what shot of whatever in their leg before game six and getting their ass out there. Because if there's one team that doesn't go down without swinging, it's the Miami Heat. And it'll live, and if you guys aren't ready to go and won't be willing to throw in, throw it all in on a closeout game, Spo and, and, and Pat Riley and Alonzo Mourning and Andy Ellsberg will look at you and be like, yep, you're gone. We're finding someone else that can do exactly that because you're a good player. But when the when when the lights are turned on, if you don't know how to play Miami Heat basketball, you don't deserve, deserve on the, to be on this team. Uh, and this also now brings up the double edged sword. We talked about the Heat being able to win that game game round one series, basically pitching a reliever game and not having any of their stars play. <laughs> it's mostly you, weak. You you it's get weak. you get your team into the fact. Oh, we can just turn on and off the light switch. And we mentioned on. Wednesday's episode, the only team that is a light switch right now is the Golden State Warriors. And even that was put to the test a little bit in game four because they tried to turn it back on and Dallas was able to stave them off. So no team can just show up and think that they're going to win any kind of game, especially when it comes to professional sports playoffs. And this is a Boston team who was disappointed in the bubble, losing to Miami in the conference finals, had a disappointing season last year. And now they have their star players playing well at the right times and getting this win in Miami is huge. Getting this win in Miami is the biggest thing for Boston sports right now. They they have nothing else that they're looking forward to. The Bruins are done. The Patriots suck. Mac Jones is not going to be a good quarterback in the future. Uh, I hope all you mass holes have turned this, all you mass holes have turned this podcast on by now so that we got this far, but I will give you credit. You are probably going to, you look like you at least have a stranglehold on this series right now, which is funny to say at three, two being the series record, but the way the heat have shown out the last two games, it doesn't look like they're bouncing back anytime soon. Bam was the top, one of the top performers of the, of the he was game. Terrible. It terrible wasn't a good, season. it's not like he had a good game and was a top performer. He was just he was the best terrible. of the worst. He has been terrible all series long. And then the game that he finally shows up on, the rest of your team decides to not show up. Yeah. Like, like it, it's funny, betting on this series, obviously I'm about to be in a different state, so betting-wise is a little different. But betting on the series, the over-under set at two of three. And right now we're hitting games at, at college basketball level games. We're, we're hitting 160s and 170s, 150s around there. Because of how much defense Boston is showing, maybe it's their good defense, or maybe it's just Miami just completely falling under the pressure. I don't know what it is, but it's it looks like we're going to get Boston versus Golden State. It'll probably be, be the most entertaining series in the NBA playoffs because they've all been absolutely shit 
um, throughout the whole series outside of the game seven from Luca and, and how much fun it was to see them pour it on Phoenix. So it, it may be the best series we get out of the finals, but man, it's, it's not, it's not ideal. No, it's not. And when, when team, when your team especially starts to struggle in the playoffs, that's when you can start looking forward a little bit. And the fact that NFL teams are going into mini camp, I'm sure you've seen the videos from today's practice where Russ is throwing to Cortland Sutton and, and it looks like he actually has uh, so, some things going right for them in practice. I just saw this coming across ESPN uh, Gruden's suit that he has against the NFL. It was ruled in favor of John Gruden today. So it is going to move forward in that process. He's suing the NFL for selective, uh, excuse me, torturous interference, uh, which legally means he, he believes that, Goodell had these emails and only leaked them in order to get Gruden out of his position. He thinks that he was sabotaged, basically. Um, doesn't put any of, doesn't actually make up for any of the shit that we found in these emails, but legally he does have an argument now at, set by precedent against the NFL. Um, this is something that we didn't plan on discussing, but it is big oh, enough no. news. That this offseason looks like it could be one of the biggest black eyes the NFL has seen in a few years. You have that, you have that going on with John Gruden, and then you have the situation in Washington where apparently Dan Snyder bought two hundred million dollars worth of land about um, um, fifty miles away from the Washington Redskins or sorry Commanders football stadium right now. So and, and he, they're saying he may get kicked out, and then Roger Goodell gets asked that, asking, well, "What do you mean about that?" And then you have the Pro Bowl debacle going on. It is the the NFL right now, outside of the actual play on the field, is is in turmoil. The play on the field carries this this game so far because of how much everybody loves watching it, and how much everyone loves having a team that all the behind the scenes stuff is just getting thrown under the rug. And if and this is this is stuff like I said. What Dan Snyder did in Washington is literally is, is as criminal of he a thing be, that's ever facing happened. like major prison time. That's what he should be facing right it's, now. It's as criminal as a thing that's ever happened in the history of any major sport. Mm -hmm. Like it, it, it's stuff that that is just that that is all just being washed under the rug because it's saying, "Oh, who cares? It's football." Right? That's exactly where they're at right now. And this John Gruden thing, and then you have Kaepernick. I, look, in my opinion, Kaepernick, I don't know if I don't know if he'll be able to play. He's not going to start in Oakland, but he gets a shot. And he and it seems as though the Raiders maybe just trying to cover up the whole Gruden and Ruggs thing by doing by giving by trying to get some good publicity to them. It's 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 something right now. And then you have the Deshaun Watson, Watson stuff, which I they haven't figured out what they're going to do with that yet. So this, like I said, if it wasn't um, for the play on the field and if it wasn't for the fan bases, the NFL right now would be in absolute turmoil. But considering of how well the team, how well fan bases do, how well the product is on the field, it is trumping everything that has gone outside of it. Because if this were hockey, if this were baseball, it, the league would be almost shut down nearly because of how bad everything behind the scenes has been going on. I really hope this is – I wanted to bring this up because I do hope that these two things stick – because the NFL has been able to get away with murder, and, and what you're saying is correct. If the ratings are good, everybody will just ignore everything else. But it's going to look bad enough. The Dan Snyder thing has to happen, and it's only going to happen right now because he was withholding funds from the other owners. It didn't matter that he was soliciting his own cheerleaders for his season ticket holders. None of the, Any of the other infractions that he had, terrible stadium design, stadium falling apart, almost crushed your opposing team's quarterback, all of that put aside – only because he funneled like $200 million away from the other owners. That's when they're uh, all the other rich white men are going to stand up and raise their hand and go, yes, that's the issue. That's why we got to get him out of here when he should have been gone eight years ago. It seems like this has been going on for so long and everybody's just known about it and just not said anything because nobody wanted to be the squeaky wheel. Well, sometimes being a squeaky wheel and, and getting one over on the organization is what is needed because the NFL needs a reality check. Because right now the NFL thinks that they can just get away with anything, and that can't be the case. If that – It's not the case. Nope. Absolutely not. Uh, it has to, be, has to be fought against, and I, I think it's at least a step in that right direction. I'm sure at some point it's going to get squashed. And the other thing that flew across my timeline today was all the Carson Wentz stuff. I don't know if you saw this. <laughs> Excuse me, about – his last couple of days in uh, in Philly about how sorry I'm choking. Huh. 
Oh, hold on. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. I'm, 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 I'm choking not as much as the abs right now, but I'm choking. Um, Howie Rosen apparently yelled at Carson Wentz, get your ass back in the game when he was injured that last game um, he had in Philly. And when he drafted Jalen Hurts, sent a smiling emoji at, at Carson Wentz saying, you're done for. It's, 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 th- there's little things behind the scenes. Like I said, if the product on the field wasn't as good as it is, and if, if the fan bases wouldn't get behind teams as much as they are, the NFL would be just an absolute shit show. Yeah. And, be, because and, of people and if running. people people stopped complaining about how much money they made and actually thought about these people as human beings, that, that might be a, a difference in, in what very the true. league is able to get away with and not able to get away with also. Very, very true. Like I said, yeah, it's I, – I, I, we're, we're both lucky that, that we're in different scenarios. Your team just come off the Super Bowl appearance, and my team is getting sold at least, and it's not as bad, and I have a brand-new quarterback, so at least we're lucky on that end when it yeah. comes to this situation. But, man, like I said, it's, 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 it's a black hey, – look, the best way I can put this is this is a heavyweight boxing fight. The NFL is 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 uh Mike T- is Mike Tyson and and and, and or and, and, and the opposing is Conor McGregor. You're gonna get a bunch of shots in. You you may you you may damage his eye one second, but Mike Tyson is gonna stand over him all at the end of the day because it doesn't matter how many bruises this 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 league has. They will always be afloat and always trump every other sport when it when it comes to ratings, when it comes to fans, when it comes to sports, whatever it may be. Outside of money right now, the only reason why they're second place in that, or not even top three in that, is because the MLB doesn't have a um, salary cap, and the NBA just gives stupid money out. That's the only reason why they're third in that. Besides that, they trump everyone else, every other sport, and whatever they want to. It's been an interesting couple of weeks for football, both at the professional and collegiate levels with the amount of drama that's been going on. Uh, real quickly, we're going to kind of wrap this thing up. I got early morning practice on Thursday, and uh, Nico's got to actually get – hopefully get on a flight this time to Dallas and, and get out there for his job. Um, I, 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 yeah, I will I will be at uh, the uh, Game 5 watch party, so ho- hopefully as you guys are listening to this, you, you all enjoyed that. From uh, from me the day before you're listening to this on Thursday, um, like I said, I, I gotta get a little bit of shit injected in my veins, yeah. so I'll, I'll be I'll be at that ruckus party in Dallas either way. But yeah, hope hope you all enjoy that. And before we end this real quick, I do want to say a thousand prayers all, all to all the people out in you got uh, Ugalve, Texas, and, and at the Hobbs School and all and all that everything. Um, yeah. Like I said, it's 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 a sad thing. I'm like I said, I'm going to be in Texas, um, the, ne- this next week. So it's gonna it's gonna be a tough one. But thoughts and prayers to all those families out there. Like I said, it's it's a, a tough world we live in, and the best thing we can do is be there for one another. Yeah, it's. I mean, all the stuff that we've complained about for the last forty minutes, and and me feeling this down about a uh, professional game not going my team's way. There's, it's, it's a reminder that not everything in your life matters as much as you think it does, especially, I I mean, I made my intentions clear about possibly pursuing a career in education. And that's, it's a harrowing reminder of what is a possibility and it's an unfortunate possibility. Um, So I I agree with you. I echo your sentiment. Um, Terrible, terrible tragedy. And and hopefully those, those people are able to rally around each other. Absolutely. And the one thing I want to, like I said, I want to end this show off off on on a high, high note. Um, high point note, high, high note, so no pun intended. Um, I missed this the past two, two weeks. I completely forgot to say this. Well, actually, no, I did say this about Astro being drafted. Oh, and look, we, we, there's a lot of Creek guys doing well in the pros. Trevor and, and James Parker are doing are, are trying to make the team for the Broncos. Hopefully, they can make the preseason roster. So, um, hopefully, hopefully, all of them can, can continue doing well. Like I said, it, look, and like I said, in the large scheme of things, Avs losing sucks. It sucks for both you and I. We fucking hate it, and, and, and it's not fun. But in a large scheme of things, cherish things that are in your life, like like, like the things that Jimmy's getting to enjoy this week with Dom with Dom's twenty first birthday and, and Eddie graduating. It's the little things. Like I said, we can be pissed, we can yell at teams, we can say this team fucking sucks, go on and on, whatever we matter. But all and all, we're all humans, and we all um, are existing on this massive planet that God's given us. So that's all that matters. Yeah, what? Somebody called out the avalanche on our timeline? Who could have that have been? I had, I had no idea. Uh, real quickly, are we talking about the avalanche in the Western Conference Final? I need a prediction to get a hot take out of you. 
I, I don't want to jinx it, so I'm knocking on wood, but are we getting – are we talking about Western Conference final the next time we record on Tuesday? Game seven win. Game seven uh, win. Game That's seven Nico's win. take. That's, you're not going to love that. I know you're going to hate every second of it, but game seven win. As long as they look good in six, I don't care if they have to win it in seven. Just don't look the way as you did tonight. That's all I care about. Uh, we're wrapping things up here on episode 90 of the Far End of the Bench podcast. Be sure to follow at FEOTB pod. Listen to our new episodes every Wednesday and Friday throughout the playoffs. Only a couple more weeks of that remaining. So be sure to uh, enjoy this while it lasts. Uh, believe a five-star rating and review. Tell a friend to check the show out. We appreciate everybody spreading the word and the interaction that we've got from you guys on our social media pages. It's really awesome. It's a lot of work. It seems like you know, 90 episodes in, and we're finally starting to, to see some dividends get paid off. So we appreciate everything like that. Be sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel as well and keep interacting with us everywhere. For that, episode 90 of the Far Under the Bench podcast from myself, Jimmy Pilato, my co-host, Nico Bryant. Thank you very much for listening. We will see you guys next week. Peace.